welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak, and today I want to talk about swinging less hard. And yes, I'm serious about that. I want you to swing less hard so that you actually swing way harder in the final analysis. So let's talk about what this means. Now, I've been seeing this at jazzwire.net. You've heard me talk about jazzwire.net. I hope you check it out. At Jazzwire, we've been working with the Red community about bumping up the tempo on some songs, like pushing people's um, technique to a place that they're not quite sure they can play. And when we do it the right way, people are finding out, wow, I can actually play at this tempo. It's pretty cool. Now, here's the thing. What I'm hearing when people are getting to that tempo, one of the things that are holding people back, they're saying, oh, my technique doesn't work. My fingers don't work. I can't play at these faster tempos. No, it's, it's not a technique thing per se. It's not a finger thing. Certainly, what it is is a concept of what it means to swing at different tempos. So here's the big first thing for the video. Swinging at a slow tempo and a medium tempo and a fast tempo are totally, totally different things. It's totally the mechanics of it, the subdivision of it, the groove is entirely different. So here's the thing, a lot of people have their comfortable tempo and they sort of know how to swing at that comfortable tempo. And then what they do is they just do that same thing faster. It doesn't work like that. Like, you know how you feel when you're on vacation, you're totally chilled out, having a great time. And so when I go back to work, maybe I'll just be like on vacation, but faster. No, it doesn't quite work that way. You have to change things from vacation mode to work mode back again, right? So we have to change how we're thinking about swing. Take a look at this PDF for a second. So what you see here is the major scale written out with eighth notes. Now, any good jazz chart is just going to be written like the first item here. It's going to be written as eighth notes, as if they were straight. <laughs> But of course, we want to be swinging. So we will, we know to interpret those eighth notes, something like this. There was a little triplet kind of lilt in there. Now I'll tell you the second item that you see on the PDF, sometimes you'll see music written out with this dotted eighth 16th thing. It's what they're doing is trying to on the page, write out a swing field. That's awful. Don't ever do that. And if you see somebody writing a chart for you like that, please take them aside, do an intervention, let them know that's bad. That's awful. You don't do it that way. Write straight eighth notes. Now, if you look at the third item, this is actually sort of what's going on, sort of. This triplet sort of feel. So the idea when I play two eighth notes, the first eighth note is longer and the second eighth note is shorter. We don't take a beat and chop it in half, 50-50, two eighth notes. We don't do that. It's more two thirds and one third. The first eighth note is about 66% of the time of that, eighth, of that quarter note. And the second eighth note, the and, is only about 34%. They're triplets. It sounds something like this. So maybe some of you have had that explained to you in band class or from a first jazz teacher. I don't actually like that explanation very much. It works, but only at a handful of tempos. So we're gonna talk about what it takes to swing at different tempos today. This is a big deal. And of course, it doesn't matter if you're a singer or a piano player or what your instrument is. So what I did here on the PDF, and by the way, I'm always happy to send these PDFs out to you. Just write us, diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. And I can connect you with Thorsten that way as well. Um, now, this little etude that I wrote, I wrote a blues etude for this, uh, for this particular lesson. And what I want to do is play it at three different tempos so that you can hear how the swing feel changes. Now, again, the people in the red community and the green community at Jazzwire that are doing this work, these are adult amateurs like you. And these folks have been listening to jazz for 30, 40, 50 years. They've been listening that long. Some of them have been playing that long. Some others have been playing a shorter amount of time. Here's the thing. They know what jazz sounds like, but they didn't make this connection. 
Some of them are just trying to swing the way they play a slow song and then do that same thing with the metronome clicking faster. That's not it. Let's look at this. So I'm gonna play um, the first item, and by the way, this PDF is two pages long. On the second page, it's transposed for you on E flat instruments, B flat instruments, bass clef. Happy to send that out to you. So let me play this first, uh, the first version of the song at about 80. So this is a very slow swing, and it'll have a very triplet-like feel. It should sound natural to you. It shouldn't sound special. It should sound like I'm swinging at this slow tempo. Here we go. So what you heard me doing is playing the eighth notes with a very triplet-like feel. So at this slow tempo, that metric talk about swing, swing is this, swing is triplet, swing is this 60-30 kind of percentage thing. So that works, that's okay. And practicing and getting it just right, swing isn't math. Swing is a feeling. So yes, there's math behind it. Yes, we can teach a computer to swing a little bit, but this takes practice and listening. But so that's the first thing I wanna talk about. So a lot of people are sort of okay at that tempo. So let's do this. Let's speed it up to uh, 150, let's say. So we're gonna speed it up a chunk, almost twice as much, and see what the feel is like now. <laughs> So at that tempo, my swing is sort of like this. So there's still a lilt, a long, short, long, short, long, but is it triplets anymore? No, it's getting a little straighter. So if before we were calling it 66% and 34%, uh, now I might call it 55% and 45%. It's getting more even as we get faster. So here's the thing, as people at Jazzwire in the community, and by the way, this last week in Jazzwire, we had 500 posts in Jazzwire. So if you think this is Jazzwire is some sort of little Facebook community where you know people come on and show off a little bit, be snarky and leave, no, 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 that's not what this is. This is the college experience that you wish you had before you became the accountant or the lawyer or the federal judge or the air traffic controller. So uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing the conversations going on at Jazzwire. So now people as they're playing faster, were sort of trying to play with the triplet feel too much and they're finding out it didn't work. So let's do this. I'm gonna crank it up one more time to 210, let's say. So we're gonna go another chunk faster, 210 on the metronome. And let's see what happens now. <laughs> tempo. Did you hear that triplety swinging thing? No. And that's an important point that that when people talk about, oh yeah, swing is triplets. 
nah, not so much. Maybe at half the tempos out there, but at the other half, the faster tempos, that triplet thing, not really. So I was playing with a much more straight feel, like pretty much exactly straight. So when I played those eighth notes, da ba da ba da ba da ba da, they were pretty well up and down 50 50 straight. Did they sound like they swung though? So here's where the contradiction comes in, and this is where people think themselves into trouble. Oh, it was swinging, so I guess I have to swing. No, swing less. So when I straightened out those notes, they felt way better. How did I make it feel like it swung, even without a rhythm section when I played that scale? Articulation. So of course, there's some great uh, places to go back to, some great videos to go back to that can help you out. Now, I'm just gonna do an example of trying to play that tempo with the triplet feel, which again, is what so many of you are doing. Now, here's the thing. Um, this is what happens when you try to do something on your own without guidance. So have you ever tried to do air traffic control as a hobby? Terrible idea. You don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> there's a lot of examples, right? So now if you want to get going quickly with this material, you can try to do it on your own and do when people show up to Jazzwire, these mistakes they've been making for 30 years. They've been uh, crashing their jazz planes together, right? And wondering why, oh, I guess I'm just not good at jazz, or wow, jazz is so hard, or I have bad technique. No, how about get good advice and quickly, within weeks, be so much better than you ever imagined. That's what happens at Jazzwire. That's what I would like to do for you. Let me play an example, it's gonna sound awful, of trying to play this song at 210 with a triplet feel. See if this sounds familiar, if it sounds like you or if it sounds like someone you know. Okay, that sounded brutal. I hope somebody doesn't click on this video and go right there and go, oh wow, Jeff doesn't sound that good. I hope that doesn't happen. Um, now, I actually made it sound better than how a lot of students would, would do because I do have pretty good technique. That long, short, long, short, doing what I was doing there, it's so hard to do. You have to have such clean technique. So I, I did okay, but it wasn't swinging. I played more wrong notes because my technique was past max on that. So it didn't feel good. Um, there was this ricky ticky intenseness to it. It didn't flow. Even though I was playing, technically I was playing very legato, it didn't sound legato. It was bad, right? And so that's an example of 200 different versions of people coming to me at jazzwire.net and not sounding so good. And that's something we can sort out quickly. So here's the thing, now you know the secret. Play straight as you play faster. You know the secret, why come to Jazzwire? Well, the trick is you have to do this work with other people and with feedback because you're gonna give it a try later and it's not gonna quite work for you. And you'll try again tomorrow, it's not gonna quite work and so you'll blow it off and you won't get better. At Jazzwire, every day, we get input on this stuff. People post a little version. Hey, here's me trying to do this. How's this sounding? And myself and a hundred other people are there for you to support and give you advice and keep you on track and keep you inspired. So I hope this is very valuable information to swing less as you swing faster. And I really hope we're gonna get the chance to work together at Jazzwire. I wanna get you playing so much better than you ever imagined.